good morning, everyone. You know, one of the things that we've been asked a lot about on Queen of the Bundle Insiders Group is, Galen, how do you layer all the products in an underage 65 selling process? Well, you've got to remember, we're not really selling these days. We're actually educating. So when you see yourself as a salesperson and not an educator, that's the way your client sees you. So what I like to do is kind of drop back in my thinking process and say, okay, if I was going to buy health insurance today, how would I want to learn about that? And none of us want to learn with a, oh, if you don't do this today, you're going to miss open enrollment. You know, guys, that's just way too much pressure. And it's one of those things like, think about the last thing you bought. If somebody would have put that kind of pressure on you, you probably would have just left, right? So what I want you to think about is, again, y'all heard me say this time and time again, sell like you buy, okay? So in this underage 65 market, you know, you can see this is going to be raw today, so just hang with us. But if you're in that underage 65 market, it's November the 1st, and you're overwhelmed. Everybody wants free, okay? We need to remember this saying, free is never free. And I say that because if you are enrolling your client in an ACA plan, and let's say they've got zero, they've got full coverage. They're paying zero. Is it really free? It's not. There's always going to be an out-of-pocket cost. There's going to be in and out-of-network cost. And the big one that so many of you forget is income protection. Now, today, in order not to get ahead of ourselves, and we are actually going to do a presentation where you guys can dial in and watch it, but I really want to talk generalities today. You know, so many folks out there are doing behind the agency, or so many folks are bringing you in their office, and so many folks are asking you to pay this monthly fee and that monthly fee. What you need to remember is, the Queen of the Bundle's been doing this almost her entire career. I know I'm talking about myself in third person because a lot of you talk about me that way. But here's the thing. Before you start paying a lot of money for a lot of things you don't need to pay for, put things out there that are important with your budget. If Aetna and Manhattan Life and all these companies are paying me to do this, then you might as well put that in your budget as free. But when I say free is never free, I'm not just talking about your customers. I'm talking about your investments. So you need to remember, your money during this time needs to be spent on leads. You need to be looking for contacts. Instead of spending your money on all these different services, it's kind of like today on all the streamings out there. You know, I started looking at my credit card the other day and all the things that I'm paying for just to watch TV, by the way, that I never hardly watch, was climbing towards $250 a month. So I just started canceling some of those memberships. So the first word of encouragement I'm going to give you today is, what can I get from Galen to build my business that costs me nothing. That's the first thing. Then the second thing you need to think about is where can I go to get leads that will keep me in front of people as often as I can? And then third, how do I best educate my client the way I would want to be sold? And y'all have heard me talk about pivot, position, and transition. It works in every bundle cell, and if you do it correctly, you are not adding on time in your presentation. In matter of fact, one of the things that I coach is think by the hour. Lawyers do it. Doctors do it. Anybody that's successful in business thinks by the hour. 
So the first thing you need to remember is I'm going to give this client an hour. Now, in that hour, what do I want to make? Now, your clients aren't necessarily paying you, but if your clients don't trust you and they cancel because you didn't explain the bundle correctly, you don't take a chance on losing just one policy. You can take a chance on losing four policies. So one of the things that I find most often, especially with our internal agents here, they take shortcuts. They don't follow the system. And when they don't follow the system, it results in chargebacks, which results in loss of income to them, loss of coverage to their client. Now their client is not going to trust them again, so they've lost credibility. But more importantly, if you're running an agency and you've got two, three, four, seven of those, then your risk are seven times greater than if it's just you selling. So the first encouragement, don't make your business a multi-level opportunity right off the bat. Make your business about you. You learn how to do it first. You perfect you first. Then you perfect others. But you've got to remember, when you've got somebody out there saying, hey, you need to go hire this person, you need to go hire that person, all they're really wanting is more agents. I like to cultivate you first. I'm going to cultivate you. We're going to make sure that you're making the money you want to make. And then once we've hit that step, then we will talk about building an agency. We will talk about how you bring in agents. I will teach you phone scripting. I will teach you everything you need to know. But I do not want you to run before you walk. If you watch those little toddlers out there, if they start running before they've mastered walking, what happens? They fall down. And sometimes they don't want to get back up. They just stay there. Well, that's not going to take you to the prosperity level you deserve. Okay, so in underage, what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to talk about what's the best bundle for underage, okay? And it's really this, okay? So we're going to take off this free is never free, but remember that because a lot of your clients who think they should get zero premium on insurance, they're thinking, I'm going to have the mother load. I learned something early on about Obamacare, and it came from my grandson's pediatrician. He said, Galen, I'll tell you, the worst thing in this country about free insurance is that people that have never had insurance don't understand the large out-of-pockets. They don't understand the deductibles. They don't understand the co-insurances. And he said, and then doctors get fired from those networks. Then they're mad at us because the insurance company didn't want to do business with us anymore because they didn't like what we charged. So there's always going to be that war between Obamacare and the medical community. And the reason that war exists is because the doctors that are up here want to be paid like they're up here. So the doctors that are in those networks aren't always the doctors your customers want to go to. Now, I'm not saying don't enroll them in an ACA. Hear me again. I am not saying don't enroll them in an ACA. We have always had that ability. Our agents will always have that ability. There's a large captive organization that I run in against all the time. They're not allowed to sell ACA business. Now, how is that right for the client? It's not. So don't get caught up in that trigger. Get caught up in what is right for my client first. So when you're talking to that client, the first thing you're going to find out is, is you're going to find out what their health history is. You're going to find out what they can afford each month for their health budget. And those ACA agents out there that just keep pushing zero, keep pushing zero, keep pushing zero, you will not last in this business. That's what I said. And I know you're out there thinking, Gayla, I'm doing really great. I'm earning $50 every enrollment I do. You're not going to last in this business because you're doing a quick fix for you, a quick fix for your client instead of permanent protection. So I want to talk to you about permanent protection for your clients. 
Permanent protection is what persistency is all about. So if you provide your client with permanent protection, then you're providing yourself persistency, which is a persistent paycheck. And that's what we're all doing this for. We're doing it for our client to have permanent protection. And when they keep those plans, then we're permanently paid. Again, permanent protection equals permanently paid. And there's nothing wrong with that. And matter of fact, there's all kinds of things that are right about that. And if you are a client and you're thinking, well, so how does that agent get paid? Well, the first thing you need to do is disclose that to them. Say, you're not paying me, the insurance carrier pays me. But my job is to make sure I build you a great package of protection. And in the under age 65 market, what you're going to do is you're going to check ACA first. If they can get it free, why not? Right? But again, you heard me say, free is never free. There could be large out of pockets. There could be out of networks. I mean, there, there's all kinds of gotcha moments with an ACA plan. Okay? But with ACA, the next we're going to do... In our market, a lot of people call these Obamacare alternatives. The government doesn't really like short-term medical because it smells and looks like an ACA plan. And they feel like it's their competition. The reason that they really don't like it is it's cheaper if you are truly not going to qualify for a subsidy. Okay? But the gotcha moment in a short-term medical is rate increases. And when you get kicked off and pre-existing condition periods, you got a lot of gotcha moments. Then you have what we call the Lux Hospital Indemnity. The government was not aware of these plans. And fortunately for me, I did a lot of research, spoke to one of our carriers, and they literally said, Galen, you're right. And we joined in a lawsuit against the federal government, and we won it on appeal. And it all boiled down to the government didn't know what this particular plan did. They thought it mirrored a senior hospital indemnity, which is giving you smaller amounts for a premium that really seniors can't afford. And even though Senior HI is a fantastic product in certain bundles, it's not for everybody. So in the under age market, under age 65, this is permanent protection. The reason this one is permanent protection is because it's guaranteed renewable. None of these two are guaranteed renewable. The ACA is a 12 month plan. Lots of agents, misinform their clients every day. You could just renew. No, that is not true. The only way you stay on that plan is a new contract. It's a 12-month contract, and it runs open enrollment to open enrollment, and that's to protect the carrier. It's also to protect the federal government because they don't want to keep giving away this insurance for free. They're trying to get you in at a good subsidy. We saw that saw that this last year. My goodness, I thought open enrollment was never going to end. Did you? It finally did for like two months. Here we go again. This, though, is not permanent protection. The government will say, but it's better protection. Could be, depending on what your claim is. But one of the things you need to do as an agent and also as a consumer, go out and Google what the average claim is today. Less than 10% are over $1,500. Less than 10%. So you've got people my age enrolling in ACA paying $1,500, $1,600 a month in a bronze with $8,150 out of pocket. So if you were to take that $1,500 
And we're going to do this for simple math. And you took that times 12. Okay? I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way. So there's $12,000 there, and 500 times 12 is 6000 So that's a total of $18,000. Right? Now, if I've got $81,50 out of pocket, now I'm at $26,150 if I have a medical occurrence on a bronze. And what if it's a network that I don't like? Well, depending on the plan, I could have a larger out-of-network cost, or I could just not go to the doctor of my choice or the hospital of my choice. And that happens a lot, a lot more than you think. Now what happens is, because my agent didn't talk to me about a guaranteed renewable plan, which, by the way, this one over here is any doctor, any hospital. And I know some of you out there are saying, but Galen, you're not talking about the limits yet. And I would say to you, you're right. I haven't got there yet. But we have to talk basic math. We have to talk basic affordability. Because if your client gets a subsidy, okay, and you remember how I said free is not always free? What if their premium is 600 a month? That's what their subsidy worked out to be. 600 times 12, what's that, 7,200? If I'm right, I think that's right. So $7,200 plus $8,150 if they're in a bronze. So now we're at $15,350. Their claim, in order to claim on this policy, has to be at least $8,150. And I just told you to go stat check how many claims are over $1,500. For that matter, check how many claims are over $10,000. That, that percentage is even lower. So be careful that you're explaining to your client what they're really spending and that free is not free and remember cheap is cheap people don't want cheap people want their doctor so some of you may be saying well Galen why wouldn't I do if I could get them the ACA for free why wouldn't I do that great question you absolutely should I believe I started off that way then, instead of going short-term medical layered with this ACA, that's a no-no. Lots of carriers are trying to talk you into that. They're baiting you with big bonuses. I compete against them every day. Stay away. Stay away. Don't let greed keep you from being good. Greed is the one thing that we've got to stay away from. We've got to stay away from. So if you do zero subsidy ACA, you should go and put an affordable choice with Manhattan. Yes, that's the plan I love because guys, they stood up for us. They stood up for me. They stood up for you. And they stood up for your client. When I sat down and told them about the farmers and the ranchers of the heartland being told to go to Medicaid, well, first of all, the government didn't think that through very clearly. Number one, when you go to fill out a Medicaid application, the very first question was, what assets do you own? Do you honestly think a farmer and rancher is going to sell the way they make an income to buy health insurance? No. Stupid question. Correct answer. But they would buy this because they're used to risk. They're a small business owner. For goodness sakes, you're a small business owner as an agent. There are certain risks we're going to take. But there are so many things built into this to help your client negotiate out of issues. Number one, because they're filed on a hospital indemnity chassis, they're a cash plan. So when that hospital administrator or that doctor's office administrator says, hey, you provided insurance, I have to charge the insurance rate, 
The only one committing fraud there are those two people, not the client. The client has the ability to negotiate cash with a cash plan. It just means that those people are ignorant, not stupid, ignorant. They don't know any better. So it's up to you to inform your client. Then we also have health advocate with affordable choice. So before your client goes to a hospital or before your client goes and gets a sonogram or an MRI, call health advocate and find out if there's a better place, a better rate. And then when they get the bill, send it to health advocate. Let them work on their behalf. And it's absolutely free to the client. It's already included in the premium. And the fact so many of you are not bringing it up tells me you're not selling it properly. So if you're not selling it properly, you will not have permanent persistency. It will not happen because you are taking shortcuts, my friend. So sell this properly. And in our next video, I'm going to break down the affordable choice sale. I'm just going to go straight into that affordable choice sale. I'm going to show you how we layer it up. And I'm going to show you what your clients could be out of pocket in a worst case situation. And I'm going to show you what your clients are going to be in for in the best situation. They need to know both scenarios. When you tell them both scenarios and you compare it to these mathematical equations, they get to make a business decision. Most of the people buying these plans, for the most part, are self-employed. 80% of your clientele is going to be self-employed. But that other 20% that's an employee that's not being provided benefits at work, they may not understand all of this, so you're going to have to spend a little more time. But just think about that persistency protection. The more time you spend, the more you're ensuring the persistency of that client. And we already know the more products a client has with you, the better off everybody is because they see you as their agent. You know, Dave Ramsey, for the longest time, was like, diversify, diversify, diversify. I think he still says that. So when we diversify their health insurance dollars and this layering effect, if they never go into the hospital, but they have an accident, you sold them an accident plan, guess what? They're going to have benefits paid. They're getting value of their dollars. In this situation right here, they're paying dollars out, and very rarely are they going to see any reimbursement. They have got to go into the hospital. In this situation right here, yes, it's lower, but it's still $15,350. When you look at what we charge, and we'll show this when we do the full presentation on affordable choice, these people are paying a third of this. So they're banking money if they were to get into a situation. And if you layer products correctly and you put this income protection on there and God forbid they got diagnosed with cancer and they want to get on an ACA plan, you just gave them the premium to pay for that ACA plan if they don't qualify for a subsidy. You know, since 2010, we have seen these subsidies go all around the world. We have seen them be high. We've seen them be low. We've seen them be free. We need to explain to our customers we only know what's going on in this 12 months with that ACA plan. We can't predict the future, which is why we want this. And the closer they get to that 50 to 64 age, let me tell you something, premiums skyrocket. They skyrocket. And because you didn't sell them the right package of protection at the right age, now they, they can't afford it. And they're really in a bad place. Short-term medical has its place in our industry. Whether our government wants to admit it or not, it does. There are a lot of students, they get out of college, they're over the age to be on their parents' policy, and they're looking for a job. Perfect place, but the government wants to outlaw them. They don't need to outlaw short-term medical. It has its place. It always has, it always will. But it's up to us to layer proper product. So if you're doing a short-term medical because your client doesn't want to pay for ACA, but they still want more coverage, you still put on a Lux HI. 
You just downgrade the program, but now you've got them a permanent protection policy that's guaranteed renewable until they turn 65 years of age. You've protected your prospect. Don't forget, the number one reason for bankruptcies is medical. Number one reason. It's been that way since I started, probably that way till I'm done. On my deathbed, of course. But however, we've got to remember this. So when we're layering, depending on the scenario, our next video will show the most popular bundles that we do. But income protection has got to be in every one of your underage 65 proposals. You can build it with cancer. You can build it with cancer, heart attack, and stroke. You can add an accident. Those are the three reasons people become disabled. Cancer accident, major heart surgery. We are in this business to take care of clients. And when we don't take the long way to explain it, they don't get it and they cancel. And therefore you lose business. And all those leads you paid for that I started talking about at the top of the hour are a waste. So what you've got to remember is when you get a lead, I don't care if you pay 10 cents for it. I don't care if you pay $99 for it. You should have in your mind, you want to make $500 in that hour. Some of you are going to make more than $500. Some of you are going to make less because you're too busy finding excuses not to be successful instead of reasons to be successful. And I'll pause right here. When you hear not interested, Get off the call, do an accountability check, and say, why did that customer not find me interesting? What could I have done better? So I hope you join me next time when I'm going to show you the layering prospects. We're trying to take these in small doses. But when you see what we layer and then you put your commission onto it, that's when you become successful. One last note. If you are a captive or career agent and you're watching these videos when I start talking commission, you need to listen to what I'm saying right here. Don't jump up and say, hey, I'm getting taken. I'm being paid too low of a commission. You need to add in your salary. You need to add in what's being provided to you. You need to add in the opportunity you've been given. But more importantly, you need to add in the fact that somebody actually believed in you enough to hire you and invest in you. That would be like you investing in a stock. You don't want to see it lose money. So when someone takes the moment to invest in you, believe in them until you get to the absolute number you want to make two years in a row. Then have a conversation with that folks, those folks and say, hey, what about if I wanted to go out on my own? That's how you do that, guys. Be respectful of the people that are investing in you. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Stay tuned for all the stuff that we're doing out on YouTube and on our page and on our group. We really want to help you this AEP and not just this AEP, AEP, 365 days a year. So thanks for watching.